Doing it the hard way. Wordly wise, 6E. Antarctica is the coldest place on Earth. It is cold even during the summer months. The temperature there hardly ever gets above 30 degrees below zero. So who would want to cross this frozen land on skis? Two women from different countries wanted to try it. Let's discover what made them do it and learn what it takes to make such a journey. For many years, for many years, both Anne Bancroft and Liv Arneson had dreamed of crossing Antarctica. That is a distance of 2,400 miles. Anne Bancroft is a teacher from Minnesota. She says that her love of adventure began when she was 10. She gives credit to her mother for planting the seed. My mom found adventure books for me to read which had females actively involved in the story. Liv Arn Arneson is a teacher from Norway. She also had a great love for ad of adventure. She, like Anne, climbed and skied in different countries. In different countries. Let me get this out of here. In different countries. It was only a matter of time before these two women met. Once they had, they began making plans to carry out their dream of crossing Antarctica. They decided to fly from South Africa on November 1st, 2000 to Queen Maud Land on the edge of Antarctica. From there, they would cross the continent on skis, pulling sleds with their supplies. They had... They both had sails to use to pull themselves along. Antarctica is very windy. Anne and Liv counted on using the wind to help them. They hoped to reach the Ross Ice Shelf on the other side of Antarctica in February. There, a ship would meet them. The ship would carry them home. Foul weather kept them from flying to Queen Maud Land until November 13. Then Anne and Liv wasted no time strapping on their skis. They set off for the South Pole, pulling their sleds. The pole was 1,500 miles away, or 1,500 miles away. The first part of the trip was on bare ice and over stretches of deep snow. They had to watch out for chasms in the... Boom. They had to watch out for chasms in the ice. Ice. The chasms could swallow them without warning. They were able to average no more than one mile an hour. Anne and Liv climbed to over 10,000 feet above sea level. At that point, they had reached the plateau that surrounds the South Pole. Traveling then became easier. They were able to rig their sails. The wind in their sails pulled them along on smooth ice at 25 miles an hour. Once a gust of wind lifted Anne clear off the ice. Okay, clear off the ice. She found herself sailing through the air for a short time. Each night they set up their tent. Then it was time for their evening meal. For breakfast, they often had oatmeal and dried fruit. They also ate fatty foods to give them energy. Anne and Liv had telephones of the latest design. This allowed them to stay in touch with the outside world. They gave daily reports on their website. The phones enabled millions of school children from all over the world to follow their adventures. When Anne and Liv reached the South Pole, they took hot showers and changed their fresh clothes. Before continuing their journey, they picked up food and supplies. The women knew they were running behind schedule. There were too many days without wind. 
If they could not use their sails, they would not reach the ship on time. On February 12th, they arrived at the Ross Ice Shelf. They had crossed Antarctica. The ship, however, was still 500 miles farther on. It had to leave by February 22nd. After that, it would be trapped by ice in the Antarctic winter. On February 14th, Anne and Liv had hundreds of miles to go. They were still, there was still very little wind. The women made a difficult decision. They asked to be picked up by an airplane with skis. The plane was standing by to help them. It carried them to the ship. They felt sadness at not completing the entire journey, but Mixed with that was relief that their ordeal was over. Anne and Liv have spent the years since their great adventure leading parties to many parts of the world.